What are the things that we're actually assessing? Knowledge. We're assessing attainment. Some people said we're assessing ability. Can you measure someone's ability? Or is it performance? These are questions we should be asking ourselves every day as we assess children. What are we assessing? And why are we assessing it? What are we going to do with this? Forget the system to some extent and just think about the purpose. And that's what I would say is anything that you're doing regarding assessment, regarding marking, data collection, anything like that, keep in mind the purpose. And if what you're doing doesn't give you any assessment information that you can use in, in kind of an effective or useful way for your staff or for your pupils, then don't do it. To see how much you've learned, it shows me what I need to improve on. Because it's encouraging. It helps us build up our confidence. To best know how to help them to continue to make progress. Uh, I think children really value the feedback. They, they want constant feedback. They're, they're very interested in summative feedback around tests, but actually I think they're more interested in each and every lesson. Where am I at with this is my understanding. Uh, where it needs to be. So it's really good for them not to know, just know what they need to work on, but also the things that they're really good at. So giving them that boost and that confidence, self-esteem, but also for them to be able to know what they need to work on to get even better. They can develop self-efficacy because they understand that they have grown, they have evidence that um, they have improved. Practice-based evidence, looking at how it works in different classrooms, thinking about it and thinking about, well, how will that work in my classroom and then trying it out, is the underpinning, I think, of all good practice. It's what I've done. I've always stolen good ideas from other teachers and then adapted it to, for the classrooms that I work with. I think, as a teacher, always trust yourself. I think that we forget that really good questioning in the classroom doesn't always come from a teacher. Questions from the children can give you information about the children, allowing the children to question each other and you. And you know, that questioning from everybody gives a lot of information. I think we forget that sometimes. There needs to be less statutory assessment. I don't think we need to assess them anymore. Maybe more, because it prepare us more for the sets. I, I think we can use formal tests far more than we do. They don't need to be stressful. They can be very dependable. We need to combine that with very sensitive observation of children's attainment, done really well by teachers. Evidence can be a whole range of things. What it shouldn't be is endless exercises produced in books for the sake of providing evidence. I think it's really important to stop sometimes and take the time to say, we do this in our school, why do we do that again? Too complex a system of gathering evidence, a lack of precision in what it is that we're looking for, just develops unmanageable systems in which there's a lot of noise and a lack of clarity in terms of direction from the school and teachers to pupils as to what they should be learning. That's when evidence gathering becomes too complex that's when it becomes all confusing. I think the most important thing is to think about why you're assessing, what, 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 what are you assessing for and how you're going to use that evidence to actually help children's learning and to help your teaching. Whether it's a test or whether it's ongoing assessment in the classroom, you need always to think about, so what am I looking for and how am I going to use that evidence? Talk to the children and you'll know if there's learning, you know, wandering in and out of classrooms rather than formal lesson observations. So for me, the biggest evidence is what, is what the children tell you. The only feedback they need is the fact that you took the time to look at it, a, a simple acknowledgement. I've had a look, I know where you are, I know where you're going, and tomorrow I'll teach you. I won't have you sitting at the start of the lesson getting on with some activity that I made up because I'm supposed to do a next step, that kind of thing. I think you, you assess children every day, sometimes without realising it. Um, I think if you know your children really well, you, you're able to pick up on what they can and can't do in a lesson and what they need work on. I think teachers should be trusted to assess their children in class. They know the kids. I know every teacher in our school knows their children inside and out. I think 
You trust a teacher's professional judgment. The turning point really was having to sit a, a, across the desk from an outstanding teacher, getting outstanding outcomes from their pupils and saying, your marking's not good enough. And this realisation that, hang on a minute, some of my best teachers are my worst markers. Maybe there's a link there. I literally took a chance and said, I'm not going to do it anymore. Stop saying marking and instead start saying daily assessment and I think you'll be on the right tracks. In terms of assessment, the one thing which I think is fundamental is being extremely clear about the thing which is the object of the learning. And, and in assessment terms, we call this the construct. What is it that I want a group of children to take away from this learning experience? The really fundamental thing. We're not um, working on a linear sort of uh, way that tr maybe traditionally English schools did, whereby we're, we're doing one question and moving higher up to the next question and moving to the next question. We're, we're generating a broader depth of understanding. I think lower down the school, they're not as aware they're being assessed. I think as well, I, I know personally, I like, to, I like to call assessment challenges and I don't like to call it testing or assessment in front of the children. So I think for them, the older, the older they're getting, the more it's becoming a bit more of a kind of, ah, okay, right, I'll just reflect on what I've got wrong and what I've got right and why did I get things wrong. In misunderstandings, there lurks the possibility of enhanced learning, both for the individual, for the group, and for correcting misconceptions. And we know from research that's critical. So by having wide variation in the practice, you can see when kids' understanding breaks down. And that gives us an insight into what they're thinking. This difficult thing of knowing what a child is thinking. As teachers, we need to be assessing so that we can ensure that um, our delivery is meeting the needs of our pupils, that we understand any barriers that pupils may have and that we can spend time considering how we overcome those barriers. You know, they're weird and wonderful creatures children are and uh, when you stop talking about things it might actually help them with something they've learned last week, last month, yesterday, that, and that then becomes secure learning but they haven't quite got the thing you're teaching now. And it's really using assessment to try and continually check where they're at as you're going through so you can make the best bet about where to teach next. Uh, informative when it's well done. <laughs> it's more than one word. <laughs> Necessary. <laughs> can I have a few words? Feedback. Moving them on. Is enhancing their learning. Knowing the children. Progress. Ongoing. <laughs> It's vital, it's key, it, it leads the teaching and the learning. Enlightening. All those students believe that we do this for them. I think we need to believe that as well. And I think that that needs to be what we do every day. And we need to question. And there's always going to be pressure from your peers, from Ofsted, from the council, that pressure will always be there. But you need to believe that you're doing it for the children. <laughs>